This is Friday Night Lights with Tim O'Brien. Brought to you by Honda of the Desert. And rewind. I wish we can keep that music going the whole time underneath the and entire I, show. And I know Rob said that he chose a more upbeat music yeah, for you, Tim. I appreciate that. That's our producer Rob puts that together. That's week seven. Believe it or not, we're week eight here on Friday Night Lights. I'm Tim O'Brien. That's Tali Latoy. Gil Rutenberg, Honda of the Desert, uh, couldn't make it tonight. Uh, our thoughts and prayers, of course, go out to Gil and his wife uh, Marlene and their families, of course. Uh, Gil will be back, though. He's not going anywhere here in the Valley. We're looking forward to getting him back here. Uh, this week was unbelievable. We're in league play now so every game counts everything means more each minute that goes by in these games a lot at stake it's it's huge it's unbelievable uh we had uh, coverage on both ends of the valley i was in uh, palm desert and palm springs tonight you were in indio and shadow hills yeah. you're gonna get into that right here yeah i am because and that's where we're gonna begin actually yeah. we're gonna begin in indio where rancher Mar mirage was looking to up in shadow hills yep. on their own home turf now the rattlers are a disappointing one and five on the season right now after that blowout loss to palm springs while shadow hills quite the opposite four and two after last week's win at xavier prep mm. and it was Neck and neck at halftime. These two teams were going at it, and so were their crowds. It was some insane stuff I saw out there, uh, Tim. So after these two came back from the locker rooms, it's 6-6, and somebody's got to pull away. The first drive by the Knights ends with them trying to punt, and then it'll just end at their own 36-yard line. So turn her on downs. Rancho Mirage takes over, but these two defenses were going crazy. Here's a sack by number 10, Travis Block. Daniel Palmer to assist, forcing him to punt this one. And it wouldn't be until the last few minutes of the third we actually see some points. This is Julian Hernandez dropping back and connecting with Zaire Rivas, who dives into the end zone. The Rattlers now on top, 13 to 6. But it's the Knights' ball now because they're trying to look to make up some ground. Now the QB is looking to just launch it. And who does he find? Not his teammate. That's actually number 23, Pedro Gomez. With the interception to just seal the deal, the Rattlers defense really rattled the Knights and holds mm. their lead in the to the final minute. Rancher Mirage takes this one on your screen, 13 to 6. And now that's their first Desert Empire League win under their belt, Tim. Yeah, that's big. Stuff. That's huge because the Rancho Mirage is not playing up to par. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of people thought they'd have this kind of down year. So for them to turn it around, league plays when it matters most, they're one and one. Exactly. So, so exciting stuff. Yeah. Now let's stay stay in the east end of the valley where Yucca Valley was looking to bounce back after that heartbreaking loss, our game of the week last. <laughs> week to Coachella Valley. Now, the Trojans were back in the Valley uh, at Indio High, where the Rajas have reeled off three straight wins. Three and straight. they're on three straight, straight shutouts. Exactly. Isn't that crazy? And they're, three, they're undefeated yeah. in the league right now. So let's get into it. It was a lot of work, early work. Be, well, the Yuck Valley can get on the board because it was a lot of like, thank God to this guy right here. That This big gain by Stefan Rogers really it can be uh, coined with all the effort that he did, getting work on that si sideline, setting them up for success, because right after, after he'll do this, up the sideline again, and just burning that secondary out, making them work, takes it to the end zone, getting the Trojans on the board first. Now let's just fast forward to the second quarter, because these defenses were incredible. Now, Michael Ramos looking down and tosses it up to Javen Hudson, absolute, absolutely mossed him. Putting that secondary more to work, he'd have two tutties by the end of the night. Now, before they go into the locker room, uh, India was still looking to get on the board, and I haven't seen a field goal in so long. So 
Thank, so congrats to Javier from 37 yards and that half would be 14 to 3. In the second half, Michael Ramos goes on to use all of his targets in his offensive arsenal. The Rajas, Fabian Garcia also does some last minute magic with what they could, closing the gap to 28-23, but it just wasn't enough. It ends with an onside kick, really weird stuff, and their best efforts would just come up short. But it's a good story, 28-23, to because it really was looking like it was going to be a shutout, but not so much so more, Tim. Yeah, it's a game that Coach Daniel Hayes of Indio probably wants back, being mm -hmm. that they were undefeated. Uh, they hadn't given up a point. To you lose to Yucca Valley, they dropped now from first to third after Coachella Valley's win, but they're still in a good spot here in, in Division Four. Yeah. Play, so. Three and one is not bad, but Tim, there were also yeah. some other stars I saw on the field tonight. The Indio Ball Boys were also uh, <laughs> just working overtime. This is Isaiah and David. They wanted to be on TV so bad, and they were asking when they could get their time to shine on our show. And I told them, tune into Friday Night Lights at 11 here on NBC Palm Springs. And if they're watching out there, they really were working overtime out there. So shout out to them, Tim. We love to do that. They love to be on TV, and we love to, you know, highlight all the talent across the valley that they have to offer. Yeah, the Ball Boys work extra hard. We should have them in studio. Isaiah yeah. and Dave, we should bring them in one night. We should. It's we not should. past their bedtime. Ask your dad. Yeah, I yeah. know he wants you to be on here as well. But still ahead tonight on Friday Night Lights, we will feature our game of the week, the Battle of Cook Street as Xavier Prep visits Palm Desert High. Could the Aztecs rebound after being upset by La Quinta last week? But coming up after the break, La Quinta flying high over last week's upset victory over Palm Desert. Tonight, the Blackhawks were in Palm Springs taking on the highly touted Indians. Ton of action still ahead here tonight on Friday Night Lights on NBC Palm Springs. Back to Friday Night Lights here on NBC Palm Springs, turning across now to the other side of the valley. Uh, La Quinta visiting Ralph Watts Stadium in Palm Springs, uh, where the Indians have emerged as some critics, a uh, top team in the valley. The Blackhawks provided or proved that they were no joke last week uh, when they upset Palm Desert. The, yeah. When I tell you uh, Palm Springs is, is the real deal, they're fun to watch, man, and I was so happy to be out there tonight. Uh, it was Palm Springs uh, quarterback Javen Kapler was staying loose between series. He had quite the performance. Uh, it was the first quarter was winding down. Kapler would uh, shake and bake a bit uh, more than uh, than what we saw here. He would take the Indians down into the red zone for about a 50-yard change run. Uh, he just ran out of gas simply. But uh, the quarter would end. They would flip sides. And this is where Kapler finds senior wideout Braden Hapner for the touchdown. Wide open. Nice grab. Turns. Puts his hands up. Falls into the end zone for a quick six. At this point, it was 16-0 Palm Springs. Quite quiet on the La Quinta side also. But it was later in the second quarter, fourth and nine. Indians bust out the trickery. It's Braden Happner again. He takes the snap but runs instead of punting it. Takes it down the sideline, putting the Indians again in good position to set up a score. And we'll fast forward here. That was actually a personal foul. I pushed him uh, once he was out of bounds. So uh, it would set up number 22, Francisco Yanez, who was... Uh, Honda, the Desert uh, Player of the Week at one point a few weeks back. He would pound the ball in. It was 28-0 at the half, and it was all Palm Springs Indians. They would go on to win 35-14 and stay undefeated in league play. Palm Springs will now travel to Shadow Hills next week. You had a chance to see Shadow Hills tonight. They're another team that's aggressive, ground and pound. Uh, I don't that score tonight, 13-6, isn't a good representation of who Shadow Hills is. Yeah, I mean, it was just, like I said, it was defense against defense. I mean, they both were going at each other's necks from the beginning to the yeah. end, and it was just crazy. It was great energy, though, and it wasn't even a homecoming game. It, uh, where? At Shadow Hills was No, no, They had no, it no. last week, I think, yeah. or two weeks ago. Yeah, exactly. So I was just like, wow, this is energy every week, yeah. week in and week out. Turning to our game of the week now, Xavier Prep visiting Palm Desert. We had a chance to uh, mic up uh, Xavier head coach James Dockery in the second quarter. Here's what he had to say. Here we go. See the ball. He's set. Your way, Austin. Oh. Austin is coming your way. Let's go. Get ready, Ryder. Get ready, Ryder. Hey. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good call. Oh, no. Good call. Oh, yeah. back turned high school coach getting it done on the sideline uh, he's cool calm and collected as they come great guy great motivator he knows exactly what it takes to win he's played at the highest level he's uh, he's onto something there for sure he's building a good program yeah we, I love these mic'd up segments because you yeah. really just get to see them in their element and just see them you know look 
I give these guys credit. I don't know that I could be mic'd up. Uh, it's bad enough I have this hot mic mm-hmm. on. Uh, I'd get too fired up and might not say something I exactly. should. Exactly. <laughs> Censorship is uh, everything. So. Exactly. <laughs> We're going to find out here on the other side of the break just how uh, good the Saints did tonight against the Aztecs. Yeah. So coming up next, we'll feature our game of the week. It's Battle of Cook Street as Xavier Prep visits the Aztecs of Palm Desert. You're watching Friday Night Lights here on MEC Palm Springs. Between the two teams from Palm Desert, you've got Xavier Prep, who had a rough season, plagued by injuries and inconsistencies. And we saw last week in Palm Desert with La Quinta, a rivalry game can level the playing field. Palm Desert upset by the Blackhawks last week. Uh, they were looking to take out the frustrations on the visiting Saints. I think it's exactly the perfect way to explain it. Uh, after last week, they weren't happy. The Aztecs wasted no time in doing so. Early first quarter, Palm Desert quarterback Brady Clemmer drops uh, back to pass, but decides to take it himself. Quick six for the Aztecs after failing on the extra point. Xavier Prep, however, would answer back. Their quarterback, Ryder Ruiz, fakes the handoff, scampers for 17 yards, says, uh, Clemmer, you can do it, so can I. We got ourselves a ball game, all tied at six. This is where it gets a little interesting now. I don't know if Xavier Prep just ran out of steam or what, but Palm Desert opens things up in the second quarter. Here's Brady Clemmer again with the five-yard touchdown pass to Dimitri Chester, who does it all on the ground as well. 13-6 Palm Desert. And then after the interception uh, from Xavier, you'll see here in just a moment, the Aztecs would continue to turn up the heat. It's Dimitri Chester again, this time with a 50-yard, 54-yard rather, touchdown gallop. Palm Desert was hit and done, though. This kid's given Aaron Ramirez from Coachella Valley a run in terms of total touchdowns. This is how good the type hey, of season. Ramirez is my fave. <laughs> it's the type of season he's having. And then the Aztecs would go to the air attack. Brady Clemmer, 41 yards in the air to receiver Daniel Yee. Palm Desert up 27 to 6 at the half. Xavier would put up some points in the second half, but Palm Desert kept their foot on the gas, and it was just too much for the Saints to overcome. The Aztecs go on to beat Xavier Prep 42 to 28. Palm Desert improves to 1-1 in league play. They'll play at Rancho Mirage next week while Xavier drops to 0-2 against Desert Empire teams. They'll regroup and visit La Quinta next week. So uh, a lot of good action in these league games. It's almost like it's rivalry, right? So anybody can win a rivalry Mm -hmm. game, but just the energy is different. You just feel it on the field. Yeah, now let's head back out to Azek Stadium because we want to hear what the uh, running back, Dimitri Chester, had, who had three touchdowns and one two-point conversion and a whole lot of highlights for the game, Tim. Let's hear it. I feel great. It was a great team win, a great a great uh, way to bounce back from a, a heartbreaking loss last week. Uh, just great. You know, every game we really just come closer and just plays like that bring us even closer together, and it really just lifts our spirits. Uh, it was it was exciting, really. Uh, a lot of nerves in the beginning, but we got over them. We made great plays, and uh, we got the, the win. We're just coming for the league, the league title. Yeah, something they've uh, done a whole lot of uh, winning in terms of getting that yeah. league title. Let's go ahead and take a look at the full scoreboard for uh, the two leagues here in the desert tonight. Starting with scores uh, from the Desert Empire League, you see Palm Springs over La Quinta, Palm Desert over Xavier Prep, Rancho Mirage over Shadow Hills. Now let's look at Desert Valley, Yucca Valley edging out, uh, Coachella Valley with the shutout, and then uh, Banning... Just, just losing right there to... Two in a row for Cat City. Yeah, I know. Sounds it's good. good stuff. Let's go ahead and take a look at the standings now. 2-0 Palm Springs, the only undefeated team in Desert Empire. A whole lot of 1-1. One and one. And then uh, Xavier, Xavier Prep, I believe, is 0-2 now. Okay. Uh, I'll have to triple-check that graphic. But uh, Rancho Mirage, La Quinta, Palm Desert, Shadow Hills, all sitting at 1-1 one and one in the Desert Empire. Now, before Empire. we leave Desert Valley League standings, there we go. At Coachella Valley, the only undefeated team left. And it's looking good so far, Tim. Some exciting stuff. It's 65 nothing. It's a big boy win tonight. They're not slowing down. It'll be interesting to see how they do against uh, Indio. Absolutely. But uh, that's Tali Latoy. I'm Tim O'Brien. Thanks for hanging with us tonight. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. We'll see you back here on Monday.